Good evening. This is Crime Classics. I am Thomas Highland with another true story of crime. Listen. That was a man lying down on a wooden slab. Chain his right leg. And chain his left leg. Chain his right arm. His left. Shackle his neck. And now a friend of the recumbent man walks over to where the whip is hung. It takes it and comes back. Its thongs are four feet long, attached to an iron ring, attached to another thong two feet long. These last thongs being dipped in milk and dried in the sun to harden them. Now the whipper gestures to his lieutenant that he is ready. And the lieutenant gives a command. Whip! Which command eventually got the lieutenant in big trouble? Tonight, my report to you on the general's daughter, the Tsar's lieutenant, and the linen closet, a Russian tragedy. Crime Classics. A series of true crime stories taken from the records and newspapers of every land, from every time. Your host each week, Mr. Thomas Highland, connoisseur of crime, student of violence, and teller of murders. Now, once again, Mr. Thomas Highland. <laughs> Catherine the Great had just died, and the great bells of St. Petersburg told their requiem. Told again the ascension to the throne of Paul I. Paul, as you know, was a trial to the Russian people, and what with him and the awful stretches of the steps, many songs were written about death and broken hearts and treachery in the home. Vodka, first condemned as an opiate of the people, came into its own during Paul's reign... Two Russian troops had taken their first defeats in the Alps, and returning to St. Petersburg, told of giants eight feet tall. Closer to nine feet. Or closer to nine feet, according to Lieutenant Fyodor Romayov, as he told it to the general and his daughter. And standing like eagles on the crags of the Alps. Does such talking bring flutters to you, daughter? Do you wish him to desist? Oh, no. Ivanenka Alexandrovna Chermayov, I do not wish to offend Fyodor you. Fyodor Petrovich Romayov, please continue. The bravery of yourself and your men who died all about you brings all at once gladness and sadness to me. Almost nine feet tall. Struck terror in the hearts of all of us. Even you, Fyodor Petrovich? I do not like to say. Then I will say it. Since I was friend to your father, Grigor Stepanovich Romayov, general of the Russians, I know there could be no fear in you, his son. I thank you, my general. Uh, that I could have stood at your side. But I am too old. Too old. Oh, father, do not no, say Too old. Old. The old vines wither and know not springtime. Nor grapes. Uh, I kiss you, Father. And now see, it is past your bedtime. Uh, true, true. Uh, then go, go. Fyodor Petrovich, I fly, I fly into your arms. Oh, the ecstasy that you've come back. Vanyanka, your blushka, little apple. How the memory of you warmed me where there was ice and mountains. I kiss your dear lips. Yet... Yet what? I am a defeated soldier. No. Not to you, Vanyinka. There is victory yet, Fyodor. No less in the Alps than here. Go to my father. Ask him for my hand in marriage. Dare I? Does the thought of it frighten you? To face my father and ask him for me? You are his only joy, his only child. And you are frightened. You who faced men nine feet tall. Some of them closer to ten. Many of them. Then what fright could you have? I will ask him. When? Soon, soon. Now, hold me. Hold me. So cold it was in Switzerland and lonely. Theodore was back home. And back home he had it pretty good... 
Uh, because he was the son of General Chermayoff's best, though dead, comrade-at-arms, the youth was given an apartment in the general's palace, which eventually led to more than a nodding acquaintance with the general's wine cellar, the general's library, and the general's daughter, Vanyinka. A few words about Vanyinka. She was beautiful, great black eyes, straight nose, lips that drew back slightly at their corners in sympathy with a disdainful expression on her face. Her manner was proud and unapproachable, goddess-like. Yet, all was not caviar and sour cream, as the saying went. Fyodor. Yes, little apple? When will you ask my father for my hand? Kiss me. No. When will you ask my father... But you are but 17. And an untutored child who finds no favor in your eyes. Vanyinka, Vanyinka, sing to me. Sing to me the song of the gypsy whose sweetheart drowned in the Neva. Sing Get to me. out of my apartment. <laughs> out! Out, lover with the heart of a pigeon. Vanyinka. What? I will ask him. When? He has asked me, the general, to hunt with him the boar. Tomorrow. In the lodge in the forest, when the hunt is done, I will ask him, since he is always in good cheer at this time. Now, kiss me. I want to. So rest, rest, Shadowfarm, rest, beautiful beast, child of the wolf and child of the dog. You hunted well, Chadova, and I love you. Fyodor Petrovich. Yes, General. You are a good lad. You please me, lad. In you I see myself in you. Uh, General. What? A Vanyinka. Oh, Vanyinka. Vanyinka, my ruby, my delight. I wish to marry her. You wish to marry her? Exactly. My soul longs for her. Alas. Alas? Too late. Too late. But two days ago... What? I gave her hand to Vasily Vasilovich, favorite of the Tsar. In six months, when Vaninka is 18, she will marry Vasily Vasilovich. That is terrible. Your heart is broken. Alas. You think of the Neva? Yes. Uh, too late. Too late. Fyodor. Yes? I am happy you are back from hunting the boar. As am I. Fyodor? Yes, little apple. What's to become of us? Life goes on, little apple. In truth, did he say that? What? My father said I would marry Vasily Vasilovich. Truth, when you are 18. But Vasily Vasilovich is a fool and he's clumsy. He falls down at such inappropriate times. Often one is in the middle of a sentence to him. But yet your father promised you to him. What is to become of us? I will remain at the palace until your wedding. Promise me. Oh, promise. I promise. I will go to my father and say I do not wish to be married until I am 20. Vaninka Yablushka. Fyodor Petrovich. And then, the next day, a small thing happened. Gregory Litnoy, a servant in the palace, spilled some soup on the handsome new gown of Vaninka, which ruined it, beet stains being impossible to remove at this time, which caused Vaninka to become furious. Flog him! Flog him! Mercy! Mercy! Take him out of here! I will tell Fyodor, and he will see that this serf is flogged. And you remember what happened. A few days later, Fyodor supervised the surf flogging, while Vaninka watched from her second-story apartment, proud of the way her Fyodor gave the commands. However, a few days later, when the surf Gregory was able to get around again... Come in. Come in. Oh, get up. Get up, Gregory Litnoy. So, 
How are your wounds from the flogging? Ivan the flogger laid the knout into my back, and where I am muscled, else I should be dead. Well, you deserve to be whipped. Yes. Now, what is it? Now, why have you come for an audience? Do not things go well in the kitchen? What? They go well in the kitchen as they go well elsewhere, Excellency. Then what? Oh, how well. What are you talking about? Down the corridor where your daughter's apartment is, they go best of all. She and Fyodor Petrovich... Swine! What foul words. No, no, listen. Yes, I'll listen, and then, hound of a man, I'll skin you alive. If my words are false, lay the knout against me till it takes away all the skin, but only listen. Speak, then. Even now, Excellency, Vanyinka and the lieutenant, lovers that sing to each other while Anushka, the maidservant, pours them wine and prepares all manner of things. No, 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 Lashes, Excellency. Do not whip me till you have seen with your own eyes. Yes, I will see. And I will tell you this. If it is true what you say, and if Fyodor Petrovich is in the apartment of Vaninka... You will flog her? Till her death. And him? Till his death. I open the door for you, Excellency. The whip the general was carrying was a boar hide and covered with brass studs. It had been his favorite since his days at the academy, when he was given to stopping serfs in the street and making of them living examples of his skill with the whip. Now he was on his way to visit his daughter. You are listening to Crime Classics and your host... Thomas Highland. Every Thursday night, CBS Radio invites you to escape. In a powerful story typical of this unique drama series, CBS Radio presents The Scarlet Plague tomorrow night on most of these same stations. Hear what might happen if a pestilence wiped out everyone on Earth except one lone professor and a girl. Hear it on Escape tomorrow night at the Star's Address. And now once again, Thomas Highland in the second act of Crime Classics. And his report to you on the general's daughter, the Tsar's lieutenant, and the Lenin closet. A Russian tragedy. St. Petersburg in the first year of the 19th century. A young city then, less than 100 years old. Created and built by Peter the Great... It boasted fine cathedrals and canals, and a headsman's chopping block second to none. It was in this city and this era, you'll remember, which gave to the Russian court the Savarov sisters, Anna and Fanya, who confounded and delighted and who sent to an early grave the false Dmitri. One of the most beautiful thoroughfares of the city was the Nevsky Prospect, and where it bridged the Neva on the escarpment was the palace of General Alexander Chermayov, retired. At the moment, he was on his way to flog his daughter to death, and her lover, too, which young people were even now at (laughs) by-play. My turn now. Anushka! Coming, 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 Vanyika Alexandrovna. (sighs) The eggs are boiled to hardness. My turn, my turn. Now, what design shall I paint on this one? Cherubims. Cherubims and doves. (gasps) Good. Oh, good. Vanyinka. <gasps> Your papa, Fyodor. Fyodor Petrovich. If he finds me here. Vanyinka. Vanyinka Alexandrovna. Yes, papa. Open. Open the door. A uh, moment, papa. Open. Open the door. Quickly, Fyodor, in the linen closet. Yes, yes. Get in. Now lie down. Anushka, get linen. Put linen on top. Cover him. It is I, General Alexander Chermayo. 
I demand it. Open the door to your papa. In a second, papa. Quickly, Anushka, quickly. It is done. Put down the door and close it. Now lock it. Now sit on it. Yes. Yes. <sighs> papa. Papa, come in. What delight to see you at this time of day. Where is he? Where is who, Papa? Where is who, Anushka? I do not know. Nor do I. Whom do you wish, Papa? Fyodor Petrovich Romayov. Fyodor Petrovich? Fyodor Petrovich Romayov. The scoundrel, the black-hearted one who comes here to your room. To my room? Look about you and see if he is here. And if he is, do you see this whip? If he is in this room, I should expect the whip, Papa. Eh, well said. Well spoken, daughter. Then I have your honor that he is not here. You have my honor. And yours, Anushka Olga Lapachin? Oh, yes. Why are you sitting on the linen closet? Why, I... It is where she sits when she assists me to paint eggs. Oh, and this you have been doing? All afternoon. Mm. Ooh, ooh, such marvels you have painted. <laughs> ah, it has been years since I have done such a youthful pleasure. Daughter, if now I joined you at this sport... Oh, I want you to. And it's being just before Easter, and since it was the custom for the masters to supply the serfs with gaily colored eggs, father and daughter painted while Anushka boiled and brought. And there was conversation. Fyodor has asked me for your hand, Vaninka. Yes, I know. I informed him when you are 18, you will marry Vasily Vasilovich. Can I not wait until I'm 20? On the day that you are 18. And so it went. Three hours, talk, tea, painting. Then the general got up. Uh, yeah. uh, it has been a pleasure, Vaninka. I will see you. Now quickly, Anushka. Open the linen closet. Oh. Petrovich, let go the tablecloth. Oh. Aninka, what? What? Dead. He's dead. Oh, oh beloved, beloved, beloved. Suffocated. What is to become of me? If your father finds this corpse here, he will whip you to death. I will throw myself into the Neva. Oh, it is not necessary. <laughs> My brother, Ivan. What can he do? He will dispose of Fyodor in such a way. Oh. Oh, do not worry your pretty head. He has disposed before. I know. Oh, do not sob. Do not cry. The dead are dead. And always flows the Neva. I must tell you that Yvonne, the brother of Anushka, is the same Yvonne who flogged Gregory. And Gregory, you'll remember, is the same Gregory who snitched on Vaninka Alexandrovna and Feodor Petrovich. And now the way Yvonne disposed of Feodor's body was this. Since there was still ice on the Neva, he cut a hole in it and stuffed the body into the icy waters. The cold wind quickly froze shut the ice again, and Feodor's body, flowing with the swift current of the river, some time later entered the Gulf of Finland. For this arrangement, Yvonne received a thousand rubles, the fee agreed upon, plus an extra thousand blackmail, which last set a precedent. Vaninka was forced to pay Yvonne money whenever he demanded it. However, being rich, she didn't mind, and that summer she spent a joyous vacation on the Black Sea with her father, that's the opposite direction from the Gulf of Finland. Vaninka. Yes, Papa? You say your uh, Fyodor... Has gone on a journey. 
to forget me. Uh, noble lad. And the next month on the Crimea, taking the waters, uh, still south. Juanica? Yes, Papa? Uh, you had a letter today. Was it from Fyodor? No, Papa. It was from Sofia Fagavia from Prushnitz. Mm. To tell me she has married a boy from Prushnitz. Uh, Boris Padyot. And from uh, Fyodor, uh, nothing. Nothing. And in the Ukraine, after the festivals were over, uh, coming home. Vaninka. Yes, Papa? I liked Fyodor. Yes, Papa. I miss him. I miss him too, Papa. And no sooner had they gotten back to the palace. Vaninka! Yes, Papa? Quickly, come. Vaninka, news from Moscow. Vasily Vasilovich fell down. He always falls, Papa. This is his last fall, Vaninka. Three flights of steps. He's dead. Dead? No. Nor must you think of throwing yourself into the Nieva, Varinka. Listen, I give you permission. Permission? To marry Fyodor Petrovich Romayov. Well? Thanks, Papa. Best way to eat potatoes. And this inn serves the best potatoes. Agreed? Agreed. <laughs> Gregory? What is it, Ivan Ivanovich? To ask you once more that you bear me no malice for having whipped you, for having flogged you. How could I think evil of you? It was the fault of Vanyinka because I spilled on her. Uh, Vanyinka. And Fyodor Petrovich, who gave you the order to lay the strap on. Yeah. Fyodor Petrovich. <sighs> Ivan. Yes? How is it that suddenly you are so rich? Drink vodka. I drink, and yet I cannot help but ask. You are a friend to me. From the same village. Friend. From the same village, from the same meadowland. Yet you are rich... And I am penniless. Bend close your ear. Vanyinka. What? Vanyinka Alexandrovna. She gives you money? Whatever I ask, she gives. Whatever, whenever. For example. Yes? I have but to crook a finger and she would come. Running if I but crook the finger. No. With a bottle of her father's best brandy in each arm. Then crook a finger. Mm. You wish to see? I wish to see. Waiter! Waiter, come here. Here are ten rubles. Go to the Chermayev Palace and ask of Vanyinka. Tell her you are of me. And that I wish her here. At once. With brandy. Her papa's brandy. At once! At the moment when Vanyinka received word that she was wanted at the inn by Ivan Ivanovich, she was in the middle of brooding. She had never been closer to the bottom of the Neva River than she was now, thinking as she was of her dead lover and how fate and a tattletale named Gregory and a blackmailer named Ivan Ivanovich had robbed her of her one true love. And so she went to the general's liquor cabinet and extracted two bottles of his oldest brandy. Then she went to the general's medicine chest and extracted a handful of the general's opium and mixed the two together. Then she went down to the inn. By your command, Ivan Ivanovich, two bottles of brandy. One for me and one for Gregory. Pull up the corks, Gregory. Yes. And now we will drink to Vanyinka Alexandrovna Chermayov. To Vanyinka. Ah! They drank, and they drank, and Vanyinka watched. 
And then they passed into the land of poppy dreams, and Vanyinka watched. Everyone else went home until all who were left in the inn were a dozing proprietor and the two dreamers, Yvonne and Gregory, and Vanyinka, who stopped watching, who went over to the fireplace and took a burning brand and set fire to the place. The inn burned well, and everything that was in it. Then Vanyinka took a walk. And so it is done, lover. Fyodor Petrovich, you are now avenged. Those who caused your death are dead now. So sleep, Fyodor Petrovich, sleep. And soon, who knows, I will be in your arms again. Gently, gently flows the Neva. Neva, mother of rivers, where do you go? Soft, the silver light on your kindly bosom. Mother of rivers, take me, hold me. I would like to be able to tell you that the bodies of the lovers were found close to one another on some distant and misty shore. But I cannot. Vanyinka did not drown. She was saved by a young man passing by. He was a captain in the Tsar's cavalry, and they rode back to the palace in warm clothes. She draped across the pummel of his steed. He proposed marriage as soon as he saw her house. She refused. He rode away to the north, crying. Vaninka locked herself in her room and never came out again. Except for her father's funeral a week later. In just a moment, Thomas Highland will tell you about next week's crime classic. Tonight's Russian tragedy was adapted from translations of the original court reports and newspaper accounts by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. The music was composed and conducted by Bernard Herman, and the program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Thomas Highland is portrayed on radio by Lou Merrill. In tonight's story, Lillian Bayef was heard as Vanyinka, John Daner is the general, and High Everback is Feodor. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Barney Phillips, and Irene Tedrow. Bob Lamont speaking. And here again is Thomas Highland. Next week, Manchester, England, in the year 1826. At that time, the Norwich Union boys really knew how to put out a big fire. They were also adept at snuffing out smaller flames. It's listed in my files as... James Evans, fireman. How he extinguished a human torch. Thank you. Good night. Your purchase of Easter seals is your way of extending the only aid there is for the crippled and disabled. Organized hospital, clinical, and laboratory campaigns to cure the curable and to lessen the burdens of those who can't be completely well again. Buy Easter seals. Make your generous contribution a fighting force to expand treatment, research, and education the three weapons of hope and of cure for the crippled and disabled in America. Gangbusters go into action Saturday nights on the CBS radio network.